The date is 30th of December 2019. Li Wenyang found seven cases of a virus that looked like SARS, a coronavirus that led to a pandemic back in 2003. He sent a message to his fellow doctors, warning them to wear protective clothing in order to avoid infection. Four days later, he was summoned by the Public Security Bureau as he was accused of making false comments and severely disturbed the social order. As a result, he was arrested although he had already been infected by the virus. In his Weibo post, he describes how on January 10th he started coughing, the next day he had a fever and two days later he was in hospital. On February 7th, he died at the age of 33 in the hospital he was treated and he was working for in the past. This tragic story let me make a video on how dangerous is the coronavirus. Hello internet, my name is Minus and today's episode is about the 2019 novel coronavirus and how dangerous it is. When you think of dangerous viruses, you think of how deadly they are. Well, even if this is the case, there is a number of factors that play a significant role. The Influenza Risk Assessment Tool is an evaluation tool developed by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention that assesses the potential pandemic risk posed by a virus. The IRET, or IRET if you like, uses 10 scientific criteria in order to measure the potential pandemic risk associated with each of the three following scenarios. First are the properties of the virus, containing four of these 10 evaluation criteria, including the genomic analysis, which is a measure of the extent of genetic diversity or presence of non-molecular signatures important for human infections and disease, receptor binding, which refers to the host preference of a virus, animals or humans, as well as the types of tissues and cells the virus is best suited to infecting, transmission in lab animals, this is a measure of the virus's ability to efficiently transmit in animals in laboratory studies. Antiviral treatment options, which refer to the predicted effectiveness of antiviral medications. Next are the attributes of the population category, containing three evaluation criteria, including existing population immunity, which refers to whether the human population has any existing immune protection against the novel virus. This criterion depends on age, geographic area, and genetic factors. Disease severity and pathogenesis measures the severity of illness caused by a particular virus in people or animals. Antigenetic relatedness is a measure of how similar a virus is compared to others. Last is the ecology and epidemiology category containing the final three evaluation criteria. The global distribution, which measures how widespread a virus is in animals, the time series spreading rate, and any management factors that may or may not affect the distributions. Infection in animal species refers to what kinds of animals are impacted by a virus and the likelihood of human contact with these animals. For example, are influenza infections occurring in wild birds or domestic birds? Last are the evidence of human infections, as well as its frequency with a novel virus not currently capable of sustaining human-to-human -human transmission. It also evaluates in what circumstances human infections occur. Following the application of this risk assessment, we come up with some ratings on how dangerous a virus is, with low, moderate, high-risk levels or even no identifiable risk. But first, let's talk about some statistics. Keep in mind that all those numbers you are about to see are according to the World Health Organization, also known as the WHO. The Marburg virus first had a fatality rate of 25%, but in some outbreaks in Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo, this percentage was 80%. The outbreak of West Africa's Ebola virus is one of the most complex, as the World Health Organization states. It can kill 50% of the infected on average, and 71% in Sudan particularly. Rabies is an extremely rare virus, and vaccines are available for pets since the 1920s, but if someone gets rabies with no treatment, there is a 100% possibility of death. The HIV is among the deadliest viruses out there, as an estimated 36 million people have died from HIV since the disease was first recognized in the early 1980s. No recovery treatment is available, although we know how it spreads and what the consequences are, making us more comfortable to socializing in contrast with other viruses less deadly. So, social acceptance plays a significant role on how we deal with the presence of a virus. For example, 
seasonal flu has a mortality rate below 0.1%, which is nothing, but it infects so many people worldwide that around 400,000 deaths per year are attributable to flu. In comparison, every year the deaths due to seasonal flu are about the same as the population of Iceland or the entire state of Wyoming. In addition, a virus has several levels of risk depending on the region it resides, as some countries can be more vulnerable compared to others. This is due to population demographic characteristics, healthcare infrastructure and economy. So, the risk assessment is about human activities where a virus is present. That's why Africa seems to be the most vulnerable region in the world. For most viruses, scientists locate patient zero, who is the first person affected from it. Regarding the 2019 novel coronavirus, this is not the case. It was reported that patient zero consumed an infected bat. Neither his identity nor his health condition is known. On January 9, 2020, Chinese health officials and the World Health Organization reported that a new coronavirus is in strain and it is associated with an outbreak of pneumonia. This is the seventh and newest type of all coronaviruses. The others are 229E and NL63 alpha coronaviruses, OC43 and HKU1 beta coronaviruses, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. It started spreading from Wuhan, a city of 11 million people in Hubei province. As of February 15, 2020, this virus has infected more than 67,000 people. Among them, 8,600 have fully recovered, but 1,527 have been deceased. On this map, we can see how the virus spreads from China to the rest of the world via aircraft traveling. The transmission rate is 3 to 4, which means that for every infected patient, 3 to 4 more people will be infected as well. The fatality rate is 2.3%. In their risk assessment, the WHO have declared that the new coronavirus risk is very high in both global and regional levels. But is that deadly? Even if the 2019 novel coronavirus infected and killed more than double people than SARS, SARS had a much higher fatality percentage. According to WHO, as of July 2003, there were 8,096 reported cases of SARS, with 774 confirmed deaths, most of them coming from China and Hong Kong, meaning that the fatality rate was 9.5%, four times higher than the 2019 novel coronavirus. Nevertheless, this coronavirus is dangerous, but the measures taken from WHO are quite strict for the sake of public health. Let's see some of those measures. Wuhan, the London-sized city where the virus began. In short, lockdown means nobody leaves the city, nobody enters the city. If this rule is breached, then the local authorities take action. People reported that they did not know what to do when they learned about the lockdown. Neither how long it would be, nor how to prepare themselves. Many rushed to the stores in order to buy supplies, as they feared it would last for even a year. The people walking on the streets of Wuhan wear masks, even if the medical society is divided on the mask's usefulness. As a result of the sudden demand, the masks were sold out. The city celebrated the new Chinese year in silence as all people were in their homes. In Twitter, some described that silence as horrifying. Some food supplies are sold out after the first days of the lockdown. Many were wishing for a new year health instead of fortune. The social impact was greater than expected. China finished constructing an emergency hospital specifically to tackle the virus. It took only 10 days and as much as 7,500 laborers to build. The 645,000 square foot facility is equipped with 1,036 beds, several isolation wards and 30 intensive care units. It was modeled based on the blueprints of the medical facility in Beijing for the 2003 SARS outbreak. This massive operation was made possible by using prefabricated units, as this is the key to construct a building at such a fast speed. Compartments were created off-site and were delivered and placed like Lego parts. A second hospital is underway, with 1,600 beds soon to be completed. Japanese authorities have quarantined 3,700 passengers and crew members aboard a cruise ship in Yokohama on February 3rd, after one individual tested positive for the novel coronavirus. The infected of that ship are approximately 218. 
Taiwan has announced that all cruise ships that pass from China will not be accepted. Of course, a huge amount of flights have been cancelled towards and from China. Other cases of lockdowns have occurred. All those measures seem like the 2019 novel coronavirus is the most dangerous infection in the world, which it isn't in reality. But those measures keep the infections in relatively low numbers in order to prevent a global outbreak. So stay safe and follow your public authorities' instructions. Thank you for being here today. Be sure to subscribe in How and Why for more weekly videos. Thanks for watching.